here is an interesting thing you can see in the picture these are green dot like things these are called algae or algae whatever you want to pronounce algae or algae so this algae have chlorophyll these are not trees or plants actually they are trees or, trees or plants but it's not like as we see usually around us so these are small dot like thing you can see them in water in pond maybe you have a uh, water tank in your house and if you see at the bottom of the water tank if it is old then there will be some uh, green like things that present in the water tank these are called algae these algae also have chlorophyll so definitely these are plants as they have chlorophyll so they can prepare their food so they have chlorophyll that's why they are able to produce their own food so these are also plants they are also doing photosynthesis in their body now here is an interesting thing you can see these are wire like yellow colored string or vine these are called cascata or cascuta they cannot prepare their own food they are yellow in color they don't have leaves so how do they survive because they do they can't produce their food so they climb on big trees they grow on big trees big trees definitely have lot of food in their body so these yellow color structure they absorb absorb food from the big tree and survive so they are not producing their food that's why they are parasite because they are eating from somebody else and the tree is called host host means who is giving food to somebody so the big tree is giving food it is called host and the yellow color structure is not producing any food for them they are eating others food they are called parasite now here comes another thing this is called carnivorous plant we all know that plants do not have mouth plants grow their own food in their body but these plants having mouth you might have seen in television they have mouth they eat insect they trap the insect in them and they eat the eat their minerals they absorb minerals and nutrition from the body of insect they are not very big they are small but they have mouth so it is not like they can't produce their food or they don't have chlorophyll in them they have chlorophyll they do photosynthesis but as i said earlier if you want to make food you need chlorophyll and you also need minerals from soil but these plants grow in some areas where the soil does not have proper minerals so to absorb mineral they as usual doing photosynthesis but they are taking minerals from the insect these are called carnivorous plants they, these are very interesting but don't get scared of it these are very small very cute so it's, it's not uh, it's not something that we have to scared about it now there is another thing you might have seen mushrooms sometimes you eat mushroom as well these are called fungi or fungi or fungi you can call it fungi fungi or so this fungi has a different type of nutrition they don't do autotrophic or heterotrophic they do saprotrophic which is again a type of heterotrophic these are plant like thing but they do heterotrophic nutrition more specifically saprotrophic nutrition here you can see saprotrophic nutrition and these plants are called saprotroph they don't have chlorophyll in their body they cannot grow their food so they grow themselves in a place let's say it is a warm humid condition humid means they have lot of water around it so warm water having lot of water in such condition they grow themselves they take nutritions directly from the soil so they don't need to do photosynthesis for their survival but remember we eat mushrooms there are only few mushrooms that we can eat rest of the mushrooms are very toxic for our body 
so we cannot eat them we eat very specific type of mushrooms now in our next topic there is an important term called symbiosis symbiosis is the relationship when somebody is dependent on somebody else and the other party is also dependent on the first one so it's like you are two friends and two friends are sitting on a same desk in your classroom and you both are sitting on a same desk and sharing let's say same book so some organisms share their shelter and nutrients with each other and they both get benefited they are not like host and parasite relationship they are in a symbiosis relationship where both are giving something to each other a great example is rhizobium here you can see a photo of rhizobium you can see there are small circular things in the root so this small circular ball like shape is called rhizobium rhizobium is actually a fungi rhizobium do not have chlorophyll so they cannot pre pre prepare their food they cannot prepare their food in their body so they grow in the roots of let's say pea tree or dal tree so in these trees in the root of their trees they grow now trees need nitrogen so this fungi collects nitrogen from air and give this nitrogen to the tree on the other hand this fungi needs food so they collect food from the tree and they survive so tree is getting nitrogen from the rhizobium and rhizobium is getting food from the tree so that's how they both are surviving and this situation is called symbiosis relationship now we are at the end of this chapter but there is another topic a small topic is called cells now what is cell if you want to understand let's say you see buildings it may be your school building or your house building buildings are made up of walls and every wall is made up of bricks they have small small bricks all bricks look same and many bricks make a wall let's come to living organisms they have same looking cells they're small brick like thing they're very small they cannot be seen in naked eyes we need microscope to see them these are called cell as i mentioned earlier you cannot see them with naked eye but there is only one cell that we can see this is egg egg is a cell it is not a organism it is a cell now there are three most important parts in a cell first one is outer shell this outer shell is called cell membrane and there is then there is a white part of this egg this white jelly like part is called cytoplasm and then at the center there is yellow color oak this yellow part is called nucleus so remember there are three important parts this yellow color yolk then jelly like cytoplasm and then outer shell called cell membrane so this much is enough for you to know about a cell it's a very big topic that you will cover in your next topics remember we cannot see cell with our naked eyes only egg can be seen with a naked eyes and egg is a cell so next time when you are eating egg remember this is a cell so thank you very much for your patience this is the end of the video thank you